Will the Konami code works? Will kinda. And the word kinda pretty much sums up my overall thoughts on Contra Operation Beluga. This game is kinda a Contra title, and honestly I feel that's why the reviews for the game seem to be all over the place. Now, to separate myself from all those other reviews, I wanted to 100% complete the game before making my review. This way I could do a really good deep dive into the mechanics and game modes before giving my initial thoughts. With that out of the way, let's get into it. So during my first playthrough, I went into the story mode and decided to pick Bill Riser as my first character. After all, why wouldn't I pick the character designed after Dutch from Predator? Knock, knock. And after completing the first level for the first time, I already started to have some concerns because the opening stage is supposed to set the tone and the pace of the game. It's supposed to be action-packed, full of explosions and mayhem. And yet, to be honest, it just felt kind of lackluster. Consider this, the opening stage in Contra Hard Corps, where we zoom into the first level in an armored car, running over enemies until we finally crash. We jump out and start mowing down hordes of monsters to some badass music. We blow up a fuel tank. Afterwards, we go against a mini boss. Once we wreck that fool, he runs into a building, knocking it over. We make our way to the rooftops, where a giant, one-eyed robot is lighting the city on fire. He jumps over at us. Boom! Another boss battle. After we take down the giant robot, we jump down from the rooftops, riding a metal pole as we slam through cars, making them explode until we come to the first boss. Now let's take a look at the first level in Operation Galuga. We jump out of the helicopter into the jungle, which is actually pretty good. That's a traditional counter scene. I have zero complaints. Next up, we fight some enemies until a helicopter crashes, lighting the scenery on fire. Then we fight the same generic enemies until we finally make it to the boss. Outside of the helicopter crashing, nothing really happens. And even this has problems. That scene goes on for far too long. Even in arcade mode, which cuts out all the story dialogue, this set piece just slows the pace of the game down too much. Now, not only are there issues in the way the levels are designed, but some of the graphical design choices hurt the experience in this game as well. And no, I'm not talking about the mobile graphics. I wanna go a little bit deeper. So one major problem I have with this game is bullet visibility. There was times I simply could hardly see what was happening on screen. And one of the major reasons for this is the explosions happen in the foreground. In past games, they would put the explosions in the background or have them flicker and kind of be transparent so you can still see your character through them. There's just too much happening in this game that blocks your view of your character and of the enemy units. Though, one thing I do enjoy about the graphics is the fact in some of the boss fights, they would take battle damage. The more damage you dealt, you could actually see them visibly being beat up and bloodied. And I thought that was actually a really nice touch. However, level design and bullet visibility is only part of the experience. Let's talk about the characters and the weapons. After all, it wouldn't be a Contra title unless we felt like the ultimate badass with a vast array of weaponry. Got tactical smart missiles, base plasma pulse rifles, RPGs, we got sonic electronic ball breakers. We got nukes, we got knives, sharp sticks. Now while the game does actually have a decent amount of weapons for you to play with, and each of these weapons has a unique ultimate ability. The laser gun slows down time, the machine gun gives you a bubble shield, the spread shot covers the screen of bullets, etc, etc. However, these overload abilities do come at a cost, and when you cast them, you actually lose the power up of the weapon you have equipped. And to be quite honest, most of the time, this function is simply not worth it. The only time I even took advantage of this feature is when I came across a gun I did not want to pick up. So I would grab it, cast overload, and then re-pick up my original gun. And to make matters worse, the reason I ignored it is because most of these overload abilities felt like nothing burgers. And it's not just the overload function. Some of the characters were just really unbalanced. For example, Brad Fang, a Contra favorite. However, unfortunately, in this game, he kind of sucks. So, he lacks mobility. In one of my playthroughs, I accidentally fell into a pit of acid. And due to the fact 
that he can't even double jump while most of the other characters can, I had to simply wait there until my health bar ran out. Now, you would think that he would make up for this shortcoming with pure firepower. However, in this category, he falls short as well because most of his weapons do charge attacks. If you hold down the fire button, you unleash a more powerful attack, which sounds awesome, but I assure you it is not. And here's why. The game still has the weapon swap glitch. However, charge attack weapons do not work with the weapon swap glitch, which means most of his guns will do a significant amount of less damage compared to the other characters. On top of this, he doesn't even get access to the good version of the crush gun in the game. So certain characters get different variations of different weapons. Brad Fang's crush gun is simply a grenade launcher, while the other characters get access to what I like to call the black hole. And not only does the black hole do an insane amount of damage, it actually acts as a shield against enemy projectiles. Now you could say, that his special character perk makes up for all of these shortcomings. Well, no, because his character perk blows. It's a claw melee attack that does no damage and only briefly stuns basic enemies. It is pretty much pointless. The only highlight for Fang is that he gets access to the more powerful version of the homing gun. Meanwhile, on the flip side, Brownie is so OP, he's practically broken. He could triple jump, grapple to higher ledges, dash, plus he gets access to the best guns in the game. The only drawback for his character is his annoying voice. The character balance just feels all over the place. But let's move on and talk about another aspect in the game. At the start of the video, I stated that the Konami code kinda worked. And that is because the code does work. However, instead of just unlocking 30 lives, it unlocks a perk you can purchase in the game's shop. As you grind through different challenges and playthroughs, you unlock coins which can be used to purchase different game modes, characters, their perks, plus alternate sound tracks. In fact, playing the game listening to Castlevania music was pretty cool. Hell of a night for a curse. Come on! But locking game modes and the Konami code behind a grind just did not feel good. Especially when you finally unlock these modes only to realize some of them don't do anything. Take the speedrunning mode. All it does is add a timer in the top right corner. That's it. This is not a time attack mode or any sort of mode that mixes up the game. All it simply does is put a clock in the top right corner. It is insane to me that this was locked behind a grind. Like, come on. What is this? Why is this even in the game? Now, let's talk about extreme mode in Contra Operation Gluga. It tosses even more enemies at you at once, which I actually kind of liked, but it adds so much HP to the boss fights, to the point that it almost feels like it's mandatory to use the weapon slot glitch as a requirement in order to kill the bosses in a timely manner, which makes the balancing issues I talked about before even more apparent. Unlike in other difficulties, Extreme Mode does not have unlimited continues. Once you run out of lives, it's game over, and you're unable to select any perks. However, at least the game gives you a health bar meter. In case this mode is not hard enough, there's also Extreme Ultra Mode. This is Extreme Mode with one hit kill enabled. You know, I want to stick up for the game for just a second. I've seen a lot of people state that the game is too easy, yet to be honest, this game can be incredibly hard. It has several difficulties and options which allows the player to determine how hard you want your playthrough to be. I have a feeling that people saying the game was too easy are the ones that played on easy or normal with the health meter and used overpowered perks. Lastly, we have the challenges, and I'm gonna be honest, I did not care for these at all. They just changed the DNA of Contra too much. I mean, we have challenges where we have to take out a boss with limited ammo. 
Who wants to have play a Contra game where you're not just holding down the fire button? Or we have other challenges we have to run through an obstacle course with a strict time limit. Yeah, that's what I want. A level with no enemies and acts like a platformer. I feel like most people are either going to play these for the achievement or simply check them out and move on. Now, I suppose you could say, hey, it would be cool to do a speedrun in speedrun mode and compare your time to other players. But unfortunately, the game has no online leaderboard system. In fact, it has no online support at all. No online leaderboards and no online co-op. Plus, the game has a ton of little annoying bugs. There were several times I would get stuck into the floor. And while luckily I could always jump out of it, it was like, come on. There's another bug where sometimes after completing a run through the game, I couldn't exit the score screen. I would have to quit out of the game and reboot it in order to continue. Now, I have seen some people say that this bug only happens when you have certain perks equipped. However, this happened to me after completing pretty much any challenge, which does not allow you to have any perks equipped. Though luckily, the game would always accurately keep track of my completions, so it wasn't game breaking, but it was extremely annoying. So let's recap. We have a game with mobile graphics, major balancing issues, lackluster level design, pointless game modes, all for the low price of $40. Why is the game so expensive? Now, don't get me wrong. I did have some fun with this title. It's not the worst game in the genre. It just has so many issues that hurt the overall experience and it greatly falls short of the legacy of the Contra franchise. So if you are interested in picking the game up, I would highly recommend waiting for a deep sell. But I would love to hear what you all think. Have you guys played Contra Operation Gluga? Do you find it worth the asking price? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you made it this far and did enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I'm going to get back to the grind and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.